first and the economic side of things I, I know i know there's a lot we can say that but we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Yeah. um uh, we'll get to that because when you say people have been satisfied economically that 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 is uh, that can be argued and we'll get to that shortly but still on the party with the ongoing legal issues um uh, especially with mr mao sampa and this extraordinary conference how has this also impacted the party so the uniqueness of our situation as part of the front is that what we're going through is not self-inflicted it is sponsored and it's not even a debate that we have to spend you know uh, hours discussing the zambian people know that uh, mr Kain and the, the upnd they are the ones that uh, you know out of fear and uh, desperation seeing the fact that patriotic front is not disintegrating as they had anticipated they were hoping that uh, the unit of the party will be affected by the fact that we have lost the election when that was not you know forthcoming i mean they've denied it are, are you able to prove that they that they are because they've denied it several times from the chief government spokesperson to i mean he himself in his conferences he's, he's distanced himself from from these allegations that you've been making you see when you are dealing with liars uh, I don't think you have to uh, go by what they say. You have to go by what the, the actions they take. Uh, and in this case, how is it that uh, a guy, an individual, would announce, uh, issue uh, some notice that I'm going to have a retreat to celebrate independence? And then uh, the entire government machinery is activated to go and uh, you know <laughs> grace that particular you know uh, event the entire police battalion here in, in Lusaka con converged that Mungushi conference center to go and protect you know and you know surround uh, uh, that criminal enterprise um, with the hope that uh, they will be able to create faction uh, you know factions within the party to their disappointment they, of course, as it were, before even that event uh, took place, you are aware that the police disclosed that they started clearing names of office bearers even before the so-called conference was to be held. It was purely a criminal enterprise undertaken with the support and sponsorship of those who were in government, looking at the way institutions of government were abused to achieve what now is uh, considered as a, you know, the, the status of um, Mr. Mao Samp. Uh, over and above that, after that whole criminal enterprise at Murungushi, uh, the police also being abused to try and clear, you know, fingerprints within few hours, without following the due process that is expected of that particular process. You know, uh, the registrar at the time of the registrar society, uh, the chief registrar did uh, uh, indicate to uh, the police and to everybody that uh, this cannot be admitted. It is illegal. We have in our custody the constitution of patriotic front, which has not been followed, and we have a duty to make sure that at least the basic minimum in terms of adherence to the constitution is followed, and this falls short of that. What, uh, what was the next thing? She refused to change office bearers. The next thing was that she was hounded out of office. All those actions point to what? Forget about uh, uh, this, uh, you know, Cornelius Mueto that the, that says things without really processing. I mean, his president to declare a hunger disaster, and he will be in southern province, the contradicting his own president. There's no hunger, you know, we are food secure. Look at the sheds. Such kind of people, you can't go by what they they say. You go by what they do because their actions speak louder than their words. So there is enough evidence to show that uh, this uh, attempt to create factions on the patriotic front is sponsored by UPND. We have been, as it were, uh, 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 speaking also to the judiciary because of the confidence we have and because of the fact that we are alive to the fact that regardless of uh, what happens in a country, in a society, if the sacred institution called the judiciary remains steady and centered, you know, 
the shenanigans that citizens do, the shenanigans that people like, you know, Misaka in the who's the uh, head of the executive and the ruling party, whatever they do, you have, you are guaranteed that justice will be meted out. Um, but as it were, there's been a lot of delays in court to have this matter resolved. And you can see from the maneuvers every time, because the real question around this issue is that needs to be answered is whether what uh, Mao Sampa did on, on the 24th, you know, is legal. And I'm sure the courts will be uh, competent enough to res mm -hmm. deal with that. But the Zambian people are getting desperate because uh, by the very act of sponsoring that, you know, arrangement, the democracy of this country is under threat. Look at how even institutions like ECZ have been rooped in. The first point was the, the appointment of UPND, non UPND cadres. The chairperson of the commission there, Madam Zalomis, uh, she's a UPND cadre. It is a fact. McDonald Chipenzi, a commissioner uh, at ECZ, is a UPND cadre. You know, and it's a fact. Uh, this uh, Casaro, the in executive director, we know his affiliation and one of the reasons why he was, he left that institution. And he has been taken there because of his affiliation to UPND. So ECZ, even in his conduct, not what they say, in their conduct, for example, the law does not provide that um, uh, ECZ, for example, begin to cherry pick who should stand, who should be a candidate, which they are doing now. The law provides that when, for example, there is an election, a by-election, candidates will go and file in, whether independent or sponsored by a political party. And after they have filed in their nominations, you know, it is, uh, uh, the law provides 14 days for which anybody who is aggrieved uh, or thinks that the uh, one who have filed in nomination, that their, their nomination papers have been accepted, does, you know, um, that process is not legally undertaken they have recourse to go to court to go and challenge the nomination. And it is the court that is supposed to determine whether somebody, you know, uh, qualifies to or they uh, qualify to participate in that election or not. Um, uh, but what has happened is that ECZ, first of all, they, are, they, they started with the Kabushi and the Kwacha, uh, where they went and said, no, uh, as far as we are concerned, we will not allow Bowman and the John Malangi to participate in these by-elections. We went to court as it were the drama and jargon in court. We were having a situation where one court says one thing, another court says something else, which brought into question um, how the judiciary is operating today. What was the end result? The end result is that the constitutional court has ruled that ECZ was offside. But that is after the damage and destruction has already been undertaken. And two individuals who carried and enjoyed the mandate of the electorates of Kabushi and the electorates of Kwacha are on the streets today, different charges because of compromised institutions of, gov of so, government. So, so you, you, you don't have uh, full, full confidence in, in some of these uh, rulings by the court? It's, the rulings of the court, uh, we have um, you know, confidence self to, to say that uh, uh, that debacle itself uh, unfortunate also put the judiciary in an awkward position, you know, because, for example, you, you have uh, the High Court that uh, makes, uh, uh, you know, presents, uh, you know, uh, puts a stay at, uh, you know, that these elections will not take place until we resolve the, quest the question about the nomination. And that question needed to be answered within a specific period of time. The Court of Appeal comes and lifts that stay and then decides the... Uh, uh, to delay the process, and as it were, um, you know, the structural arrangement of the court is that, uh, you know, the lower court cannot reverse or challenge the decision of the, uh, you know, higher court. Through that process, the constitutional court makes a particular decision, and because the constitutional court's jurisdiction is limited to interpretation of the constitution, and then the court of appeal also makes its own decision. The elections take place, votes are, you know, uh, cast, then you are in the Constitutional Court again with another action challenging that election. By the time the Constitutional Court is coming to make a decision to determine all the fraudulent activities around that, there are people who don't enjoy the mandate of the electorate in those constituencies sitting as members of parliament. We all know that. So 
to, to that effect, I want to believe that the Chief Justice has, is reflecting on those uh, occurrences because it's embarrassing uh, to have such decisions made where the court eventually pronounces that whatever happened was fraudulent. But it was aided where? Where was it supposed to terminate? It was supposed to terminate where? Within the judiciary. Even this Mao Sampa issue is a litmus test. The only thing I sympathize with President Edgar Chagalunga, I sympathize with uh, the leadership of the party, you know, given Winda, myself and others, we are under so much pressure, so much pressure to contain the members of, uh, you know, uh, Patriotic Front, some of which, some of whom are very radical in terms of what they think would be the solution to this whole situation. But uh, we are, you know, insisting that uh, let us continue uh, to wait for the judiciary to do the right thing. We are not asking the judiciary to favor Patriotic Front. We are asking the judiciary just to disperse justice and do the right thing. And, and, and speaking of that, justice, because that's one element um, of, of, of democracy, a, a, a fair uh, justice system. But when we talk about democracy still, uh, if we look at how the international perception is. We've seen the we've heard of the ranking that President Nijinoma got in as far as democracy is concerned. Just recently, the outgoing British High Commissioner also, um, you know, uh, had uh, great things to say about where we are at as a country as far as democracy. Listen, is concerned. So uh, that uh, uh, that uh, that that fe don't... that fellow that is going out, uh, only is uh, part of this mess, and actually they are just ashamed of uh, admitting that. Uh, person they spoke for and supported uh, in opposition and eventually formed government has lamentably failed. I mean, he has um, uh, gone contrary to what they expected themselves. It is out of shame that they still continue to utter things like that, contrary to what the Zambian people know and are experiencing. He, if he can open his uh, mouth and say there's no shrinking democracy in this country, do you agree yourself with that kind of opinion? The, 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 that opinion is actually insulting the, the intelligence of the majority Zambians who are complaining. If And I want to ask uh, Uli, as he goes back to wherever he's going, does he think that uh, 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 stopping of opposition from having public uh, you know, rallies uh, entails that uh, democracy is flourishing? Let him tell us or go and tell the whoever is going to meet where he's going whether stopping people from just walking the streets of uh, you know our you know our cities our country amounts to you, you know and, and getting into that particular issue into, uh, before you disrupt uh, i have a list that's, of that's under yeah. the public order act yeah. what, what mr willie mentioned um is he, he did identify certain aspects and he says number one even just the abolishing of criminal defamation and and, and so on is, is part of the democratic tenets he even made reference to what happened in 2021 the smooth transition he, he made reference to that 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 was part of what has been going on now even when you look at Issues around um, cadarism, for example, where people are not fully able to express themselves physically and and, and, you know, and show which uh, party they belong to or, uh, or support okay. without being intimidated or harassed. All these. If if we, if the measure policy. if the measure of Mr. Uli's statement is based on historical facts, would agree with him, because for the smooth transition to take place, it is not on the basis of the conduct of the UPN or Mr. Kainichlema. It's on the basis of the conduct and attitude of the leadership at the time, President Edgar Chagalung and the Patriotic Front. Because we believe in democracy. And therefore, when clearly... But maybe that's his point. His point is there is democracy in this country. And he's not looking no, 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 for but the comparative the, analysis. He's no, looking it's, from the, what's going on in the But country. that statement is destructive if we are also, while we are looking at history, we also have to look at the present and be able to project where the future is going or where we're going in the future. The future is bleak insofar as democracy is concerned. And the, uh, somebody who was alive yesterday and their lives is threatened tomorrow, you can't be dancing around the, the fact that they were alive yesterday. You should be worried that tomorrow they may not be alive. So in this case, democracy is under threat, under, so you know, it, U, U, UPND. In this case, have, it, we, have we ever had democracy? Because some of the things we're seeing now and that you are complaining about as, as the patriotic front, people experienced under the patriotic front leadership. So... What are we saying about? But what are those things that we, uh, the experience of? We talk about rallies and, and people being stopped from from. Which which these, which political rallies. party was stopped uh, having rallies uh, we, under? We have these things on record. We have uh, former President Edgar Lungu been speaking about this. Him talking about how 
it shouldn't be campaigning all the time. It shouldn't be campaigning all the time. No, but that, but the, no, no, no. If, 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 uh, if, issues under the if, Public Order Act. Mr. Chimueka, if the president says, colleagues, can we focus on, you know, on development? We just came out of an election. We can't continue campaigning, uh, you know, from year one to year five. Why don't we find a common ground for us to develop this country? It doesn't amount to but stopping. That's, that's intimidating people from gathering. That's not intimidating. If you make a statement like that, it, the police will definitely act. And if people from an opposing police will want to gather, okay. they, they will be limited to do so because they've heard the Republican president speak so. And if he speaks like that, they'll take it as, as a directive of policy. <laughs> Wa president Bando kwa tiba ne ten tu mbele cha ponzo la tiku kuise kuise tu tu leto bi antanshi kuchalo if you have campaigned through and through if you want to divide the chagano ngo but tava tu mene ba kapokola nga akainde chile mara ya mkuu tarali tava tu mwa tava tu mwa kapokola kwa ba kanya yao vare kwa tamarani unless in a situation where for example the police has been very ex in expressive to say that you know they they cannot proceed because maybe it has collided with another event or things like that but under uh, the UPND. This is the third year. No political party has been allowed to have a rally, not even an indoor meeting. But has this been a directive from the president? Yes. I, I because the police, well. the, yes, because under, you know, uh, statutory instrument 1123, the police are under, you know, you know status. The SEC are under status. DEC is under status. These law enforcement agencies are under status. Direct supervised by the president. That Musamba is just uh, some ancient arra arrangement that was brought in, uh, you know, as IG, but he's not the one making decisions. The decisions are being made from state house. Possibly, Siandenga is more of an IG than Musamba himself. When you sit with Musamba and interact with him, you can tell, you can even sympathize with him. He's just a figurehead there. He's not the one making those decisions. You know. Well, regardless, we still have the Public Order Act, which has not been amended. But to what it's, still, it's still in its current state. And even if we want to talk about um, some of these gatherings, it's not the first time former President Lungu has been guiding on this. Even with his joggings, there was a concern from the police around security and Yes, it has been proven that when he goes out like that, he's going to uh, call and, and, and he's, he's going to have a number of people following him. And this, this creates a gathering. He's been guided and cautioned on that recently. And he continues to do this. Isn't this provocation? No, no, no. What That's provocation? Are you telling me that uh, President Lungu must, be, uh, must live as if he's in prison? Uh, he shouldn't enjoy his freedom of movement. But he shouldn't. Know that him going out gets attention like that, and he's going to pull. The back. only reason, this, this the only reason, the only reason, Chimweka, President Lungu is getting that attention is because the Zambian people have realized that they had a good man in state house, they had a performer in state house, they had a leader in state house who cared for them, and the, because of propaganda they were misled to you know, have him out. And this time around they are crying for him to come back. And uh, that is as a result of the you know, failures of the UPND. If the UPND want to lessen the attraction that uh, Edgar Lungu is, uh, you know, generating from, you know, the citizens, all they need is to perform. Reduce the price of Minimum to 50 kwacha. Edgar Lungu will be walking the streets lonely. Reduce the price of fuel from, you know, 30 something, 20 something, 29, 30, you know, to 12 kwacha as you had promised. Edgar Lungu will be walking the streets of this country only. Reduce the price of um, in, uh, electricity, <laughs> the electricity tariffs. And this government, they are fantastic liars. Moeritwa goes out there and says, no, uh, ERB increased the, um, uh, the electricity tariffs and fuel without consulting government. Then they have gotten rid of Mr. Boa, the, the chairman. If at all that is the, the fuel that uh, the increment was wrong, why didn't they, first of all, reduce the increment and get rid of Mr. Boa? They have rid gotten rid of Mr. Boa, but the increments have still remained. It's hypocrisy. That man, they did just what he in the seat. They were looking for an opportunity. But as it were, they are so reckless, the opportunity they used to get rid of him doesn't even make sense to the Zambian people. Because the how can you increase electricity tariffs, increase fuel, and that the president is not aware? Meaning that uh, in this government, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. 
how can institutions under the executive be undertaking such you know um uh, uh fundamental ex you know changes which will affect directly the citizens of this but country you, without the government without the government knowing without the president knowing you think that speaks into the independence of the institution no it and speaks to chaos it speaks to an irresponsible president why is he sleeping that is such adjustment to be making and is busy we need a president that is, you know, uh, in charge of the affairs of this country. Hands-on president, not a president who is expressing surprise. You know, the police are misconducting themselves. Then the government says, we are not aware that the police are doing this kind of thing. If we are told, we are not going to... What kind of government is this? Who are outspaced? They are busy with deals. They don't know what is happening in these institutions. Basically, that's the, the explanation. Because this president, so far, we have only come to learn uh, about the fact that in most of the things he has done are just deals that benefit uh, you know, him and his friends. Whether it's in the mining sector, whether it is around the, the agriculture you know, processes of procurement, whether it's inputs and so on. That is what we have come to see. Him and his friends, in, in what way are you... Are you well, uh, and, I mean, the, there is a lot of uh, you know, information circulating around the interests that are more at a personal level when it comes to Mopani, when it comes to KCM, because we know that from the onset... From the onset, the KCM deal was, uh, in, uh, from the pronouncement of the European deal, was rotten. That Indian that we were pronouncing just when they came into government, we all know that uh, he was a wrong fellow to even consider giving KCM back to. But uh, because of... Uh, you know, what was happening before the election, remember there was revelations about the fact that he also contributed to money to their campaigns and there were undertakings. Today we are sitting with Vandetta, who's first of all, first broke, but also owes something like $12 billion. And one of the greatest assets that they used to borrow that money, which he has failed to pay back because he's bankrupt now, is Bizarre KCM. And that's why you take that asset back to. I mean, we're being reckless as a, as a country. Okay, well, we'll talk about, because now, now you're speaking based on uh, uh, speculation. You say this personal info, this information going around of personal interest. You're not speaking based on uh, speculation. And these are, again, it's not information you're able to, to prove here unless you're able to prove that. And, listen, uh, Mr. Chimueka, and I would want to challenge you. If you want us to get into evidence as though we're in court, just uh, this is Friday, isn't it? So call me on Tuesday because you have your program on uh, on Tuesday and what and Friday because the media might tell me if you to give us evidence. So if you are serious about demanding for evidence, can we can we uh, you know meet on Tuesday or Friday? The, 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 then I'll be because then again, and it's another issue we're going to talk about issues around. Misinformation that is it's not misinformation, peddled, peddled by yourselves as the patriotic front. It's not and misinformation, being, being dubbed as propaganda by you as, as the opposition. How can it be propaganda? Let's take the case of KCM, or maybe uh, let's deal with KCM, for example. Are you telling me that the Zambian people and the people of Chingora and Copper Belt don't know that Vandetta is a wrong fellow? In the first place, the first transaction that he, he, um, he had undertook, maybe a, a bit younger. The guy came because of these same ways of approaching things. Instead of having um, approaching things from a point of uh, patriotism, a government before decided to basically sell KCM at a song of twenty-five million. The guy didn't even have to pay that twenty-five million dollars. He went on. Uh, he went and used the assets to go and raise funds. Within a short period of time, the guy was boasting of having minted something like $500 million within just a few months. And he was an international forum mocking Zambians around that transaction. We didn't learn anything from there. We are back to square one again doing the same thing. And we should be talking about technicalities, no, to pay any yeah, evidence. The evidence is that... Been said around even just the mining sector, even before this was, uh, the, the mine was, uh, was handed over back to um, Vedanta, what was said is this, this is there's a, there's a new agreement here that's been put in place. Moreover, on, Which top, agreement? on top of all of this, even around the financial capability, recently Vedanta did come out and say they are financial... You have seen the and agreement. The, the, the was, there was a statement that was put out... Kabusu, Minister of Mines, our agreement was verbal. 
a gentleman's agreement. We have been agreement. We have been demanding for this government to publish that agreement we, up we, to today. We, we, we that they did agree on so you are also trading in speculations. No, 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 don't get me wrong, Mr. Nakachin. Yeah. We're talking about what was said in terms of the commitment coming through from Vedanta. This is what we're talking about here. Talking about the commitment from Vedanta and what they said uh, they will be able. How to can a commitment as, to as they, as a commitment by a broke man, of a commitment by a broke man, satisfy you? Have to say they are financially sound to to, to handle that. That's I mean the international. The international institutions have declared the guy bankrupt. Who do you want to believe? A broke fellow or the institution to which he borrowed? He has been declared bankrupt. And that's how come up to today the KCM issue has not been resolved. The government keeps on telling us story after story. The Mopani situation, where we seated here as a young person, we should be crying. We had the opportunity to get this um, mine. 100% in the hands of Zambians. Because the ones who were running Mopani, you know, wanted to untwist government by saying they are going to t retrench 3,500 workers. And we said, if you can't run and you're posting losses, please walk. And we're gracious enough to be able to get into an arrangement for them to walk. And we get the mines, the mine, you know, 100%. How is it that uh, would again go and give it to foreigners? Over 51% sold to foreigners, not even at a song, at a chorus. It was a company that doesn't even have history of mining. The tendering process that was undertaken to which we had a Chinese company, a South African company, and another company was abandoned unceremoniously. Then all of a sudden we are told there's some uh, uh, Arab Emirate uh, company. When you you know check and uh, the background, it doesn't even have any history of mining. West is basically least, it was recently just uh, you know established. Uh, uh, but to the country, what and you say, don't want to ask country questions country about. Uh, you don't want us to go ask questions uh, around that. A very, a very number of people, especially with the investment for uh, Mopani through International Resources Holding I IRH here, and from the commitment first of all, and them coming through as an equity partner now. We've had a number of people expressed uh, optimism with this. And area. I want to appeal to the Zambian people. And These people, where, where it was left off when, when the, uh, when the was, UPND the are feeding us with the, a lot of propaganda and misinformation to just keep people's hopes alive and they buy time. It's like Kumuntu wa kwaten Kongole, Mwamu Kumanyero Alandati, Mairon Kakupela, Masoshin Kakupela. They keep you hopeful like that. And then tomorrow they don't own up to their promises. The situation we are in as uh, Zambians today is that uh, Misaka and the HLM will take a trip, come back, and mobilize civil servants, mobilize the students or pupils, take them, you know, the very thing we ab abhorred and condemned during UNIP times when they were, do were doing Chisokone, transport them to the airport, get everybody to start dancing that we have achieved debt restriction. We came on these platforms like the Phoenix and told you, it's a lie. You yourselves, the media, were saying, no, 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 no. He has assured us. He's from there. He, you know, he's from Paris. They have been able to cut, uh, secure the deal. What has happened? That debt restriction is basically, as it were, a fantastic lie. Up to today, those uh, arrangements have not been able to be concluded. That's why we were telling the UPND, for quite a plan in Fuebo, for a congruent part of the money they are trying to debt the structure is us, you know, towards the infrastructure. And we had a plan that after concluding the infrastructure programs, there was a way we we're going to handle that and the, how we we're going to deal with the debt. The only challenge that disrupted that whole plan was the COVID uh, situation that ravaged the whole world and basically, you know, um, affected the global economy. But as the, the COVID was being resolved, had we continued after 2021, this issue would not have been as challenging it's, as it, it is it's today. Not that because a lot of what people are experiencing, the cost of living at the moment, which we're talking about soon, what we're hearing is all this is, is part of what the, the current government found through the debt that was left by the... No, 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 no. So uh, just, just on what you say, you say this would have been worked and would have been dismantled. Yes. How exactly? Yeah, because uh, first of all, Mr. Saka and the HLM have said that he has a solution, isn't it? He was even giving timelines. In Engana, I saw take between 10 and 14, the magic that will take place. 
we're going to resolve all these things. Actually, I'm from America and UK. I've met uh, investors and I've been able, they are, I have, uh, you know, pledges in billions of dollars that when we get into government investment, we're flowing like uh, manna from heaven. Isn't that the promise that we're making? And we're telling them that's not the way governance operates. We are in the saddle. What this man is promising you can never happen. So what we know have done to dismantle this that is uh, something that I can even refer you to a manifesto to deal with that because we're dealing with issues of governance. But I can tell you the template and the plan to deal with the debt and to begin to have the infrastructure I've put in place begin to you know um, uh, generate value and resource towards the repayment yeah, of... I, um, I, I bet you know your manifesto very well. You have the Secretary General. Yeah, of course. Like no, no, no. no. Exactly of of course, for example, one of the the cash cows that we had generated is, the, you know, we had put in place is the investment in the energy sector. I can tell you that uh, uh, investment in the energy sector generation of power was only undertaken by the federal, federal government. They're the ones who had put uh, up the, is it, uh, Cafe Gorge, you know, you know, not Cafe Goji, but Cafe Goji, is it uh, up or, or whatever they call it, Cafe Goji, let me just put it that way. The next thing, it was uh, the unique government in 1972 that also made an investment around the Kariba. Uh, uh, I may have mixed up the, 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 the years, but the only other government that has invested in the NH sector to generate, you know, power, to in excess of what the, the local consumption requires is patriotic front. And look at dismantled uh, hopes in disbanding the debt. When you are able to generate uh, energy, it has cast getting positive effects, you know, because production is ramped up. You know, imagine if we, we didn't make that investment and this government's reckless exporting of uh, reckless exporting of uh, electricity and so on today would not be even be having the little time that we have to have uh, you know power it would have just have been in in darkness so that investment was to be able to uh, inject you know aid to production because you can only grow your economy and be able to generate money to pay back uh, uh debts by generating fresh money yourselves Hence the investment in, in the energy sector. The investment in the road sector also was to increase you know, uh, economic activities because the, the transport sector is very critical. And if you look at the numbers in terms of what you generate, if we're able to also implement what we're intending to implement also smart protection, so that when it comes to uh, the wheels that are moving in Zambia, it is uh, you know biased to some extent towards the, the local transport uh, you know transporters and so on. Of course, for now, because our friends are more inclined towards promoting foreigners, foreigners are the ones that are abusing and destroying our roads because they haven't got a deliberate policy to you know you know promote and encourage the local transporters the local producers the local farmers the local people who want to get into industry to produce um, you know local products that we can export even the issue of the exchange rate we will not be able to see any meaningful arrangement because these people have actually uh, taken us back to the uh, a position where everything even the little efforts we are making towards uh, beginning to produce local products has actually been uh, reduced to zero. What is going on now is that uh, the, the, uh, uh, we are now impo an import-dependent uh, you know, import country. Which import, you know, the moment a country is beginning to depend on uh, imports, you can never generate uh, income to strengthen or forex to strengthen your your local currency. And that is what we're going through as so a country. With, with everything you've just mentioned, uh, so you believe this, this was a better plan as opposed to what have we been seeing now around the debt restructuring um, uh, uh, agreements and the discussions that have been held with, with the, the creditors and so on. You, which, by the way, as, as, as the opposition, you've seemingly humiliated and almost pretty much downplayed despite the efforts that have been made by the current government. It's not humiliating. We have just been expressing the reality, the facts not the f the promises and the the, the lies. Because said, th those those sound like long term plans. So many Zambians would have still been experiencing a lot of these hardships. No, 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 no. First of all, we will not we are not going to be reckless. Uh, you know the way the UPND have been. We will not have exported. You know um, maize in the manner that uh, they did. Remember that we are taking measures ourselves. You know uh, that obviously taking the principle of fact that in times of plenty. That's when you 
plan for the time of scarcity. You know, you must always, as a country, anticipate that something could go wrong and you should be able to navigate through. How is it that just one year of drought, Ms. Aka Indechinema has declared the hunger disaster and begging all over the world? We had, you know, droughts ourselves, but we were able to navigate. Why? Because we utilized the opportunity uh, during the time that we had very good rains and, uh, you know, had the bumper harvest and uh, uh, we managed the, the hills well. We used to be laughed at, you know, by the European Indian opposition when, for example, would put a policy to say we cannot, uh, you know, export maize. And if anybody is given an opportunity to export maize, the treasury should be able to benefit. We had imposed an excess uh, 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 duty up to about 10 or is it 10 or 20 percent, you know, so that if we, our food is to go out, at least there must be something that comes into the treasury. Today, and uh, the maize we left, it was being exported one time without anything coming to the treasury. And now today, we are even having a situation in Chongwe here where we're hearing the attacks of maize that are coming from Tanzania. The very maize that was exported, now we're buying it at, even at a higher price. That's recklessness. And still on prices of commodities, uh, let's also get into the issue of the, the, the cost of living. And like I've alluded here, what we're hearing is a lot of what we're experiencing now is because of where we were at in the past, uh, especially prior to 2021, um, and issues around the, the, the external factors that contribute to the prices we see of commodities now. Uh, part of what you've been advocating for as opposition, and to be precise as a patriotic front, is around subsidizing, especially essential um, uh, commodities, fuel in this case. Mm. You strongly believe in this, and, and is, this is even in spite of the costs that come with that. We hear also the oil marketing companies uh, complaining about backlogs being owed to them and so on. How, how did this work you know, under the Passive uh, Front government? First of all, governance is not business. Okay? Governance is not uh, business. You may have avenues of generating income, which also can involve you running some business. But when it comes to the welfare of the people that you govern, you may have to take measures, some of which that are a cost at the treasury, to cushion, to cushion the weak in society. So the aspect of sub, you know, subsidies, the very uh, countries and uh, uh, some of which that have a lot of influence on organizations like IMF and so on, like US and so on, they subsidize some of the sectors to make sure that they balance their economy. But when it comes to third world countries and, you know, countries that are coming up like ours, they come and impose measures that actually, you know, uh, cause the citizens of those countries like Zambia, you know, start experiencing excruciating economic conditions. For example, growing maize, that's our staple food. Don't you think it is, it, it is uh, the responsibility of government? to make sure that when it comes to issues of input and enabling farmers to grow the step of maize, they are aided even if it is subsidizing. So that there is, you know, guaranteed staple food at all times at an affordable price. Well, whose job is it? Who's going to come and, you know, help the Zambian people to buy their mini meal at a cheaper price, save for the government of the day? And how can it do it? You can't subject I fundamental issues of that nature to market forces. That's reckless. Why are you in government? Why w was Mr. Aka in the voted in as president? So you're to come and run a business? If, they pay, if the PA for giving the mandate to continue with governance, would not we, be seeing prices um, increasing. They would, they, would, they would maintain their prices. We would not see any external factors that will contribute to the, the price. beauty about patriotic front is that uh, you have a history to look at at the time that we we're leaving office the price of minimum was below 100 kwacha it had increased at some point but we ramped up production we did make uh, take measures in terms of uh, subsidies in certain areas fisi program was re reconfigured to make sure that you know the farmers and the citizens who are willing to farm were aided to farm by the time we were getting out of government, the price of, of minimum was less than 100 quarts. But even with that's the, that's even a responsible... The subsidies you're talking about, it's at what cost? For example, if you talk about Zesco, Zesco has been complaining that they, in terms of debt, 
uh, even just service delivery has been affected because of the same issue of wanting to uh, please the population and you keep prices low. I mean, with these tariffs to talk about, and yes, people will complain, but it's the same people complain about service delivery and, 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 and we also can't ignore the, the monies being owed. Listen, the, the, the greatest uh, deficit to which where we were departing our as patriotic front was that uh, do you know that uh, uh, the country unfortunately from historical times were subsidizing even the mining activities as part of the the incentives that are offered for the investment they are bringing in this country and those incentives you find that they are uh, they are agreed over a longer period of time over a longer period of time. And to that effect, uh, uh, the ones that carry the Lord are the citizens who are using power for consumption. And what we were, the approach we're taking as a you know, patriotic front, when you look at the numbers, is that if, for example, those who are using our electricity to generate profit were to pay a commercial rate, you and me may not even need to pay for electricity. Do you know that? If we just dealt with those concessions that we give to the my, these big mining, whatever, who consume over 50% of what is generated by our, uh, you know, electricity generating, you know, companies, if they just paid, a, you know, a, something commercially to what they are consuming, a Zambian may not need to pay. That's a reality. But when you have a government that is not bold enough to start looking at that and restructure it so that the Zambians begin to benefit from those investments, that is basically what will, you know, uh, uh, will happen. And now we have a deficit because they are exporting to, to countries where uh, you know, uh, we are hearing that there is an export, you know, ex uh, they're exporting um, you know, electricity to South Africa to can't save their friends because uh, road shedding there may affect some elections. I guess you've just joined us. This is Let the People Talk. And our guest this morning is uh, from the Patriotic Front, Mr. Raphael Nakachinda. And we did